All right, guys, welcome back to the fourth video of our series, how to create a full Flutter app using Firebase. In this fourth episode, we'll be focusing on Firebase authentication, meaning creating all the sign-in, sign-up methods required for our app. So let's just, let's jump right into it. So we are here in the code and actually I've navigated under packages, user repository, lib, source and to the Firebase user repository Dart. And here in our class, it's where we'll do all of those methods of signing in, signing out, signing up and resetting password. But before we create all of those methods, let's go inside our Firebase project that we've set up in a previous video. And here you'll want to navigate on the authentication service on the left. And here we'll set up uh, new sign-in method. So you just click right here and you see you have a bunch of options right here. We'll focus on email and password because that's the pretty much the, 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 the easiest to set up. I'm not talking about the anonymous uh, method of signing. We could, but here it's really uh, about learning how to do real world stuff. So click on email and password and enable uh, here the email and password don't enable email link, you can, but here on this tutorial, we'll just focus on that. And then you can go ahead and save that. Once that's saved, that means that we'll be able to create new user using Firebase authentication services. But to do that, we need to navigate to another website that's called pub.dev and here actually look for Firebase Oath. So we're gonna take this package, Firebase Oath, copy this package and in our code, under the user repository, remember the repository where we are dealing with all the stuff regarding the backend and the user. We'll go inside our pspec.yaml file and under Firebase right here, we'll, you, we'll paste Firebase authentication. So once that's done, we can actually start creating those, uh, this class, actually this Firebase user repository class. But remember, uh, once we created the app structure, it implements the user repository and user repository is just right here. It's this abstract class that we have right there. So perhaps before doing anything, we'll create those sign in, sign out, sign up and reset password method right there. So first we'll want to create a sign in uh, method. So this sign in method will be basically taking an email and a password and it will be a future because all the, the calls that we'll make to the backend are going to be asynchronous. So we need it to be a future. So that's what we're gonna do right here. So sign in, and then in our file, you have sign out. So basically sign out or log out, that's the same. So we will as well add this method right here. We have as well sign up. So sign up works the same basically, except that uh, we'll take a user uh, as a parameter and uh, a password as well. So let's go ahead and import a user repository Dart in order to access my user class. And lastly, we need our reset password uh, method. And we can go ahead and save all that. And you see that you have some errors appearing in our Firebase user repository because it implements the user repository abstract class and we need to override those methods, those abstract methods that we've created. So you can go ahead and create those four overrides. And basically it's creating for us the logout, the reset, the sign in and the sign up method. So I will just reorganize a bit everything. So let me take the sign up and put it at the very top, uh, uh, as well as the sign in method that I will put just under right here and then we are pretty much good to go perfect so before we actually start implementing those methods i want to create a, a firebase authentication parameter in our class so basically we'll do that at the very top right here and you'll see you have an error but that's very much easy to fix by importing firebase authentication so once you have that created you need actually a constructor for our class right here, and we'll create that just over there. So Firebase user repository constructor right here, and it's taking a Firebase auth um, a parameter, but if not, we are just pasting it Firebase auth.instant. 
And right here, we'll be using this Firebase auth parameter throughout our different uh, methods in order to create the stuff that we want. So let's go ahead and create the sign up, the sign up method right here. So first we want to add this. So we want to add everything inside a try catch because if something bad happened, at least we'll know what hit us. So you can, you want to go ahead and do that pretty much all the time in your, um, in your uh, methods and add a rethrow. So basically it's gonna display in the console right here if something bad happens and throw back the exception up the food chain uh, if something happens. And here we'll implement actually our method. But before we do that, you see we are expecting a future. So if you have a future, you need to make your function asynchronous. So right here, I will paste that. So basically our user is gonna be waiting the Firebase auth parameter that we just created and using the method that's from Firebase Oath, create user with email and password, that's taking the email as well as the password and we can access the email directly from the my user right there. So that's very, very much done. But what we wanna do is actually, because remember in our user, we have an ID parameter, right? And we want to set the ID parameter of our user to the one that was just created right here because you see it gives us a user credential and inside those user credential, you have a parameter that's called UID and this is what we want right here. So under that, I will just use the copy with method that we created and set that my user, so this one, and I will copy it with the ID that was just generated by our uh, Firebase uh, authentication method right here. And then, Remember, I want to return a user. So that's exactly what we'll do right here. Return my user. And that's pretty much done for the sign up method. Very straightforward. So I will collapse that. Now we want to focus on the sign in method. So again, same stuff as always. Wrap everything inside a try catch. Log the message if there is an error. It's just for development purposes, but then you can uh, when everything is working, just get rid of those logs. But right now we want to see if something bad happens. We want to see in the console that something had exactly happened. And here, same, we are uh, ex expecting a future. So we need to make the function asynchronous. And once that's done, we want to sign in a user. So same exact stuff as before. We are gonna await because this is a future. So we're gonna await the method from Firebase Oath sign in with email and password really really clear and it's taking as a parameter an email and a password that we passed just here and our sign in method just like that is already done so let's move on the logout method same let's do a try catch let's log the message if there is an error and rethrow it the food chain up and the logout method well let's see yeah but you get you guessed it same here, well, because it's a future, we need to make it asynchronous, but Firebase Oath, and then use the sign out method. And just like that, you have a very much easy, straightforward method to log out to your, your user. And last but not least, we want to create our reset password. So same, I'll wrap everything inside the try catch, log the exception if there is one and re-throw it if there is an exception and, well, you've guessed it again, uh, using the send password reset email. And because it's a future need to make everything asynchronous, but from the Firebase Oath package, we have a method send password reset email that takes an email and we're basically utilizing just that. And you can go ahead and save everything. And in the way where we have now our sign up, sign in and log out and reset password method, it's pretty much done. We have nothing else to be worried about right here. So the only methods that we want to create now that I didn't create it yet because it uses stream and it's actually gonna be in a later video that we'll be using that. But I think it's important for you to understand that if you sign in the user, you want to pass it inside your app that the user has been signed in and we'll be doing that with a stream. And that's for uh, future videos 
But anyway, thank you very much for, uh, for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video where we'll be setting up Cloud Firestore. Bye-bye.